Hey Algebra 2, today we're going to talk about problem solving using formulas. Well, um, formulas, nice little word there, um, formulas don't change. So like this, see this formula right here? It's not going to like up and change where that becomes a minus um, all of a sudden. So that's a big, uh, good thing to know about formulas is they don't change. Okay. So when you rewrite a formula, don't um, magically put a different symbol or put like another minus in between the R and the T there. Um, it's a formula. It doesn't change. All right. So let's just get to our first uh, word problem. Here it says, at the end of two years, six months, Sylvia owed a total of $22,500 on her college loan. If she was being charged a simple interest rate of 5% per year, how much money did she originally borrow? Use the formula of A equals P plus PRT. Well, first of all, it's good to know what these mean. So A stands for total amount. Okay, total amount. All right, P stands for principal. So principal, basically, it's how much did you originally borrow? Ooh, principal, how much did she originally borrow? R stands for rate. And then T stands for time, okay? So, again, the formulas only work if you understand what the variables stand for. So, at the end of the year, uh, at the end of two years, six months. So, whenever you're doing a word problem, always write down um, information that you know, uh, especially when you know if a variable um, is specifically a certain amount. Here, two years, six months, time, okay? So, our time, six months is half of a year since there's 12 months. So instead of saying six years to uh, two years, six months, we could say 2.5. Because again, six months is half of a year. She owed a total, so total, so we know A is equal to 22,500 on her college loan. If she was charged a simple interest rate, so rate, right there, rate of 5%. So here's the thing about percent. When you're putting percent into a word problem, you don't want to use 5%. Where you, what you're going to do is you're going to take that 5, and you're going to move the decimal over twice. Okay, So it's actually going to be 0 0.05. That's what we're going to do. Again, when you do percentage, because percentage is a number over 100, okay. We're going to move the decimal over twice, so rate is 0 0.05. So obviously, they won't give us a problem where we know all of the information, or else there's nothing to solve for. So we know A, we know R, we know T, we must not know P. How much did she originally borrow? Your principal. Okay? So here's where you just plug in exactly how the formula says. So A, 22,500 is equal to P, which we don't know, plus P, which we don't know, times R, so 0 0.05, times T, which is 2.5. Now here's where a lot of people get me messed up. They have two P plus P is 2P. But this P is connected to these two parentheses. These, these are all being multiplied, okay? So first what we're going to do is 2.5 times 0.05. So, we get 22,500 is equal to P plus, these two multiplied gives us 0 0.125 P, okay? 2.5 times 0 0.05 is 0 0.125 P. Now, we have like terms here. So, remember, P is the same thing as saying 1 P, okay? There's invisible 1 there. So 1 plus 0.125 gives us 1.125p. Okay? Again, combine like terms. 1 plus 0.125 is 1.125. And lastly, to get p by itself, because again, we're trying to isolate. That's the verbiage we're going to use. Isolate the variable. Get it by itself. That's what I'm saying. Divide by 1.25.
So on a calculator, if you go ahead and divide by 1.125, you see that P is equal to $20,000. So what does that mean? It means Sylvia borrowed $22,000 at an interest rate of 5% per year. And after two and a half years, that's how much she owed because of interest. Okay? So again, figure out what you know. Again, they're not going to give you two variables that you don't know. There should be only be one. So you have to look. Figure out what the word problem is saying. Figure out what each variable um, is, what the value of each variable is. Time, years, months, that's time. Total, okay, we know that's total amount. So that's A. Percentage, whenever you see percentage, you know that's the rate. So we, we know we must be looking for P. How much money did she originally borrow? Principal is original. So we plug into the formula, exactly how the formula is, and then we solve for P. So this would be our answer. All right, let's move on to the next one. Find the initial vertical velocity V in meters per second necessary for an object launched upward to reach a height of 800 meters at the end of four seconds. Okay, so it's wondering, so we shoot something up in the air, it's saying um, the height, 800, okay, 800 meters, the time it takes is four seconds. So um, what we're trying to figure out is what's the velocity, okay? So we shoot it up in the air, we're trying to figure out what's the speed. Okay, what's the velocity? Uh, well, we have a formula here. H equals VT. Let me erase this really quick. Equals, or H equals V times T minus 5T squared. H is equal to uh, height. Again, understand what each uh, variable stands for. V is velocity. And T is always time. So we have, there's three different variables. We have to, the word problem needs to give us at least two bits of information here. Well, we know that height of 800 meters. So height is 800, four seconds, that's time. Time is four seconds, okay? Meters, seconds. We don't know V. So that's what we're gonna be solving for. And again, don't change the formula. This, the formula for, for vertical velocity will never be h equals v times t plus 5t squared. It's always a minus. Formulas don't change. So let's plug in exactly how we see it. h, which is 800, is equal to v times t. And again, v times t is the same thing as saying t times v. That's the same thing. Two things we multiply the same thing. So I'm going to put the 4 for t up, up in front of v. Okay? Minus 5 t squared, and again, t is 4 squared. So um, let's always do order of operations correctly. So first we're going to square the 4, which is 16. So 800 is equal to 4v minus 5 times 16. Now we get to multiply these two. 800 is equal to 4v minus 80. Okay, and we need to get V by itself, so we need to move stuff that's not connected to V over to the other side. So we're going to add the 80 plus 80. So now we're left with 880 is equal to 4V. So our last step is to divide by 4. Okay, divide by the coefficient. V is equal to 220. And again, like the labeling says, find it in meters per second. So 220 meters per second is our velocity. Okay? And that is how you solve for velocity. All right, let's do one more. A trapezoid has an area of 144 square feet, or we can write it just like this. 144 feet squared. Find the length of one base given that the length of the other base is 7 feet and the height is 16 feet. Well, what is a trapezoid? 
A trapezoid is a quadrilateral or a four-sided shape in which two of the sides, this is a terrible trapezoid. Um, let me try this again. It's not going to be perfect, but oh well. Okay, pretty ugly, but whatever. A trapezoid is a quadrilateral or four-sided polygon in which two of the sides are parallel. Okay. Well, um, this we can't do this problem unless we know the formula. So th this brings us back to geometry. Well, the area of a trapezoid is one half times the height times the sum of base one plus base two, the two bases. Now the bases of a trapezoid are the two sides that are parallel. So let's call this base one. Let's call this base two. Okay. All right. Well. A uh, a trapezoid has an area has an area, okay, area of 144. So again, let's go ahead and write down area is 144. Find the length of one base given that the length of the other. So let's say we know base two. We get to choose is seven feet, and it says the height is 16 feet. So therefore, we must be solving for base one. We don't know what base one is. So we plug exactly into the formula. 144 is equal to 1 half times the height, which is 16, times the sum of base 1 plus base 2, which is 7. Well, 1 half times 16 is like saying what's 1 half of 16, which is 8 times base 1 plus 7. Well, we can go ahead and, since it's 8 times the parentheses, we can go ahead and divide the 8 out from both sides. So 144 divided by 8 is 18 is equal to base 1 plus 7. So our very last step to get base 1 by itself is just get rid of the 7 by subtracting. So that gets canceled out. So therefore, base 1 is equal to 11. So we look back, how do we label this? Well, we're talking about feet, so 11 feet. All right, so that is how you do it. So you find the formula, figure out the formula, establish values for each variable. Um, there's going to be one variable that we don't know, and that's the one we need to solve for. So we plug into the formula exactly how the formula is written. Just plug the va values in there, and then we isolate the variable, get the variable by itself. So good luck with that. That is how we solve word problems using formulas. All right. So good luck with that. Have a good day. Bye.